All right, when it comes to fishing, we all have our geographical biases, or I guess hydrological biases. Maybe you like flats or points or grass beds or whatever. For me, it's fishing bayous. I'm just naturally drawn to twisty, windy bayous because I like to dissect them, figure out how the water is flowing and maybe eddying in certain areas and how that's impacting the bottom and setting up fish to feed. And I especially like fishing new bayous, at least bayous that are new to me, because catching fish in new water is always a lot more exciting than just repeating something based on nostalgia where you had success in the past. Plus I find, at least for me, I, I fish new water differently. I'm a lot more thorough. I pay a lot more attention to subtleties than I do in water that I've fished before. You know, if you go to your usual spots, areas that you know well, you tend to skip a lot of water and just focus on spots where you've caught fish before. And you know, every day is different. There might be fish feeding in those specific areas, or there might not be. They might be set up maybe 30 yards away in an area that you completely ignored. That being the case, I'm always studying maps at home, looking for areas that at least look to me like they should be productive. Now, of course, I don't know till I get out there. I mean, maybe the water's dirty or there's no bait or there's no grass or the water's not moving well in that bayou or whatever. You don't know till you get there, but that to me is what makes it fun and exciting. Every fish caught in that situation really just kind of validates my research. And bayous that aren't as good as I thought make me kind of go back to the drawing board and try and figure out maybe why they didn't produce fish. So today I thought I'd take you through some of the key elements that I look for when I'm doing map study at home. And I figured the best way to do that would be to explore an area that I really haven't fished a whole lot. And every time I have fished it, I've gone with somebody else. And that's the area known as Myrtle Grove in Plaquemines Parish. Very productive area for a lot of people, and I know it holds a lot of fish. And as a general rule, I find areas that have some freshwater influence are a lot more productive than those that are highly saline. And so Myrtle Grove is kind of in that right zone to produce a whole lot of fish. All right, give you a big picture sense of the area we're looking at. This is the Myrtle Grove launch right here. Provides access through this canal to an extensive area of marshland all through here. And that's where we're going to be focusing today. Go ahead and zoom in. So again, these are bayous I've never fished, never in my career. This is just kind of what I would look for to give me hints of what might be productive. So this first one is right here off of Bay Baptiste. It's this bayou here. Now, what I like about this bayou are a few different factors. Number one, probably most importantly, it's got a pond that it drains that you would expect to hold a good number of redfish, at least. So that makes this bayou probably a corridor from the lake to the pond. I would expect fish to move back and forth based on the tidal conditions. Following tide, you would think they would come from the pond to the lake, rising tide, you would expect them to push from the lake into the pond. What I also like about this bayou is that other bayous feed into it. So you would expect this part of the bayou to have some pretty good depth. That depth is gonna get less as you move up into this bayou because obviously it branches off. Each bayou is not gonna move as much water as this main portion of the bayou here. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It could be a good thing, particularly in these bends that'll be deeper, that'll provide eddies, and that could concentrate fish. Now, I would most likely just ignore this little cutoff here. I'm betting not a lot of water moves through this. There's probably not a lot of depth. It's probably really shallow. If I came to fish here, I'd probably start pretty close to the mouth and work my way in. I would also ignore this, except for the fact that I would certainly fish the mouth of it, particularly on a falling tide. And I would come all the way through here, fishing my way in, Got a really nice three-way right here that I'd spend a lot of time and attention on. You can see the bayou, the main portion of it moves this way. So that's probably the route I would take. I would also focus on this. Looking at this little blowout right here, it's probably pretty shallow. So that could, could be problematic depending on how high or low the tide is. Might not be able to get through this, but if we could, I would come up through here all the way up to this. <laughs> with the goal in mind of getting to this right here. Hopefully you can see this little bit of deeper water right here. This could really, really be productive, particularly toward the end of a low tide. You figure this whole pond is gonna get really, really skinny. And a lot of times, boy, just a really a whole lot of times in that situation, I'll find fish just right along here in this little bit deeper water. They'll stack up, ride out that low tide, and as soon as that tide turns, they're gonna start rising again. Those fish will fan back out 
into this pond. Now, if this tide is not exceptionally low and I can float in this pond, there's a number of other areas, and I think they're pretty obvious, that I would definitely pay some attention to. We've got this little drain here coming off this man-made canal. Definitely looks like a good spot right in here. We've got this other drain coming from this pretty significant bayou, it looks like, coming into the pond. I would pay some attention here. And if none of that produced, I would head back up here where you can see this darker water draining from this area. And boy, this really, really looks good. I would come through here, fishing this, paying particular attention to this really four-way here. They got this little canal right, right here leading into this. And I would come through this, fish this. This water looks nice and dark, which means it's probably got some depth, which, which means it's probably clean. And pay particular attention to all these runouts coming into this, this main bayou here. This all looks really, really productive. Obviously, in a situation like this, you could spend many hours just exploring this one bayou. Now, if I get in here and spend, you know, maybe an hour or so, and I really can't find any fish, that tells me this bayou is probably no good. I might turn around and, and leave. But these little features that I've identified doing my map study, I promise you would be calling my name. It'd be hard to leave this area without at least paying these some attention. I, I can't imagine. I cannot imagine coming in here, fishing this bayou, fishing this, Fishing this cut, this cut, coming through here, fishing this bayou with all these cuts coming in, I wouldn't find fish somewhere. It would, it would defy logic. The only thing that could be the case is maybe I went on a dead tide day or if the water was just dirty. It, it just one of those days maybe had a lot of rain or a whole lot of wind and the water's just not, not good. Um, I really feel like I would catch some fish in here. Okay, and the other bayou I'd look at is a little bit to the northwest of that other one. It's off this little bay here, and again, it, it just looks really, really intriguing, not only in the route of the bayou, which admittedly there are a few things that maybe concern me a little bit about the main part of the bayou. Uh, you see these kind of washouts here. The edge of this bayou is not real defined. It's kind of a little bit washed out. That tells me this bayou might not have good depth. It may, I don't know, I'd have to get in there and see, but it's just kind of a warning sign that maybe it's a little bit broad and, and kind of washed out. But I would definitely come in here anyway just to check it out because I want to get to this. Uh, you see this little man-made canal here that drains into this, this natural bayou and this other natural bayou. Admittedly, there's not a whole lot of a big water in here that's going to be, or a significant pond that's going to be draining into this bayou. Uh, we do have this little kind of washout here and this other one upstream here. On a falling tide, water, I would think, would be coming all through here, through these different runouts, these different uh, bayous, which would make this a really intriguing area to fish. I would spend a lot of time exploring this, fishing the miles of all three of these. And the reality is, I can't tell you how many times I've come into situations like this, might find a few fish here, might find no fish here, and I'll just venture up one of these little really insignificant bayous, you really almost call them ditches, and end up finding a whole bunch of fish. This particular little bend right here with this run out coming into it on a falling tide, man, just really looks good. This one as well up here. One of those situations where you definitely want to have a push pole. I don't know the, the width of this bayou. It may not even be wide enough for my boat to turn around in. And so you can certainly get yourself into trouble in situations like this. That's why you've got to have that push pole nothing else you can push yourself in reverse back out of this out of this bayou it's not fun but uh, i've done it many many times and at least gives you a way to get out okay now i'm going to show you something that i really try to avoid when i'm doing map study this bayou right here looks pretty good to me particularly this little feature right here with this drain coming out of this pond this really actually looks really really nice i would probably come up in here and explore this i like the bulk of this bayou you can see some really defined edges we've got some drains coming in all of which are really good features but look up here you see this kind of blowout here where it just kind of gets less defined all through here that's something i'm going to pretty much avoid uh, it's just assuming there's not going to be a whole lot of water there you can see another one over here this is just kind of blown out it's going to be really flat probably not very deep and it's it's just really to me probably not worth the hassle i could maybe push pull across it to get to this water if you notice this is that same bayou that we came in through a different way but this part of it just looks like uh, too big of a headache for me same thing down here i'm going to avoid stuff like that i'm probably not going to 
get myself pinned in an area like that. I'm gonna stay focused more on these bayous that are a little more defined. All right, little bit different video today. I'm definitely a cardophile. I look at maps almost every day. I really actually just enjoy it. The Louisiana coast is so intricate and has so much potential. You could literally fish every day of your life and never fish the same spot twice. That's what I like about it, and that's why I love getting out and exploring. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Mass on channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, We'll see you right here on Marshman Massa.